to part four as we look through the neuron. This time we're getting a little bit bigger. We, remember we started small, we looked at just what a neuron was, and now we're looking at nerve, nervous system, which is a whole bunch of neurons together. So the first thing we need to talk about is the central nervous system, the most important part of the nervous system, which is composed of two things, your brain and your spinal cord. That's it, two things, but super important. Um, Everything, all the neural impulses, all those messages, everything that those neurons were saying that we've talked about in the first three parts, they all get traveled here through your spine <clears throat> and most of them up to your brain unless it's a reflex, which we'll talk about later. To help you remember, central nervous system is in the center of your body. Your brain and your spinal cord go right down the center of your body, so this is where your central nervous system is. Um, your peripheral nervous system is the outside or the periphery so anything that's not in the central nervous system is in the peripheral nervous system is another way to think about it. Um, any nerve that you have. So what's a nerve? A nerve is just a bundle of axons, really. And if you remember what the axons are, remember we had our cell body and our dendrites here that received incoming information. And then there was that long thing that went to the terminal branches or the terminal buttons down here. This long thing right here, that was the axon. Remember the myelin sheaths were around it to help the neural impulse go faster. So a nerve is just a whole bunch of these all wound up together. That's what makes up nerves, so the nerves of your body. Um, we have different parts of the peripheral nervous system. The somatic nervous system, this stuff is voluntary. So anything that's voluntary movement that's your somatic nervous system. So me moving my hand right now in front of my face, that's voluntary. That's thanks to my somatic nervous system. That's the opposite of its counterpart, the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic, automatic. Um, autonomic nervous system does things without us having to, to deal with it. So for instance, the heartbeat, um, your glands secreting hormones, anything that you don't have to think about, your, your lungs breathing most of the time, that's your autonomic nervous system. It happens autonomically, <laughs> automatically. And your autonomic nervous system is uh, further split up into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Um, your sympathetic nervous system is your arousal. It arouses you. So this is your fight or flight, right? Um, when you get scared, your sympathetic nervous system goes off, right? You get extremely aroused and you're uh, ready to run, you're ready to fight or, or, or flight or run. And uh, parasympathetic is calming. Both of these things occur without us really actively having to do anything. Um, we just we just have to let, let them happen. It takes energy and whatnot to do these, but it it's they happen automatically. So if we... Uh, you know, to draw this out, we have your nervous system, just so we can maybe see this graphically. And your nervous system, you know, has two parts. It's got the uh, central nervous system, and then it's got the uh, peripheral. peripheral nervous system. All right. Well, the central just ends there, right? That's just your brain and spinal cord. Your peripheral nervous system goes further down, right? Your peripheral nervous system is divided into two spots. Your somatic, right? That's your voluntary movement. That's your hand movement. And then your autonomic, your automatic nervous system, right? And th so this is the stuff that happens automatically, your heart beating, um, adrenaline, etc. And then finally, this autonomic one's further split up into the sympathetic, which was your fight or flight, right? Fight or flight, or your parasympathetic, which was your uh, calming. So this is how your nervous system's set up, right? Um, Draw this out for yourself when you're studying for it, and it'll help you kind of understand it. As you're drawing it, repeat what there each one involves, what it has in it, and what its function is. 
Um, part of the nervous system's job, we talk about reflexes. Uh, a reflex is just an involuntary movement, so it's involuntary. Involuntary movement. A uh, reflex never reaches your brain. So most information goes, we talked about this I think in part two, most information goes from your sensory neurons up to through your central nervous system, through your spine, to your brain. Your brain then tells what to do and it goes back down through a motor neuron down and tells you how to respond. A reflex stops at the spinal cord and runs back down. Um, so if I have my finger touch this flame, boom, right? And it's super, super hot. Um, here's what's going to happen, right? I'm going to have some of that. I'm going to have a neural impulse that goes up, starts going into my spinal cord, right? So let's say this is my spinal cord here, right? Well, before it gets up here to my brain, right, it's going to stop right here in the spinal cord, and there's going to set a signal right back down that says, hey, idiot, get your hand off that flame. You're going to burn yourself severely if you don't. And so you pull your hand away very quickly. You know, you get it out of there. Um, the reason why we have these reflexes is because we would hurt ourselves very badly if we didn't. It's an evolutionary thing to save our lives, right? So we've developed these reflexes to help us uh, not hurt ourselves and to do things without having to think about it. Because um, if your brain has to stop and think about it, that's a lot of extra time to, to do something, right? And so, especially in sports, you see this a lot, right? It becomes a reflex of how you react to certain things. When you see a little uh, kid playing basketball, when he has to sit and think about his dribbling, right? He's not very good at it, and it takes him a long time to dribble down the court. But when you are experienced and you put in hundreds of hours and thousands of hours of practice, it becomes a bit of a reflex to you. And you don't nearly have to think as much about it. And so you're able to react more quickly. Uh, so that's a similar thing with a reflex. Uh, the reflex arc is kind of exactly what I told you about. Uh, I think maybe a part two again, or maybe it was part one. Um, you receive uh, incoming an incoming message, right? Uh, it then goes up to your brain, and your brain decides what to do with it and then that message is then sent back down and it tells your uh, movement you know you do something with it so that's that's just referred to as a reflex arc going in this direction like that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> final thing we need to talk about here is the endocrine system this is the last part about the nervous system that we really need to uh, discuss um, endocrines are just chemicals that help regulate your body, okay? So this is chemicals that are released that help regulate your body. When I say chemicals, an endocrine is uh, exactly, or the endocrine system is exactly like neurotransmitters that we just got through talking about. They're both chemicals, right? The only difference between a neurotransmitter and an endocrine uh, is where those chemicals are produced, right? Neurotransmitters are produced from the neurons, Endocrine and hormones are produced in the um, different endocrine glands. So depending on where it's produced, depends on what it's called, but they're all the same. They're chemicals and they help control our body. This is a much slower, kind of like the slow system. It's much slower because um, it's got to get in your blood and then your blood has to absorb it. And that then helps regulate what your body does or doesn't do or how it reacts. So it's, it's a lot slower than the quick actions of electricity that's flying through your neurons um, which are these hormones right or these chemicals some of these chemicals are hormones that help regulate your body um, your adrenal glands they're located right back here uh, right behind your pancreas this is stuff that happens um, that you get when you get uh, aroused or that fight or flight system it starts producing remember we talked about nor epinephrine uh, am I spelling it right? Probably not. Norepinephrine. Um, and remember we talked about that had to do with arousal and whatnot. Again, adrenal glands is where the, that's produced. And uh, also epinephrine can be produced there as well, but uh, it helps produce that. Pituitary gland is this little tiny gland up at the base of your 
hypothalamus, which kind of regulates it, but it's, it's known as the um, master gland. It kind of controls all the other glands and tells them what to do, when to produce stuff. It controls um, your growth, uh, so like your and your sexual maturity. Um, so it's all it's all uh, it's it's pretty much the granddaddy. It's about the size of a pea, actually. So like this is literally the size of the pituitary gland. The guy who's controlling all of your hormones in your body is that big right there. Kind of crazy, right? Um, there's also some other glands. The thyroid. Um, this this one's not necessarily messaged in your book, but your thyroid gland, right? That's your that can it's metabolic. A lot of times, um, especially women, can have problems with their thyroid. And we're finding this more and more as research gets a little bit better. And um, especially as ladies age, they might have thyroid problems, which is uh, in, interfering with their metabolic rate, right? And your metabolic rate determines how fast or slowly your body consumes the calories that it's getting. And so a lot of times when people have weight issues, especially as they get older, there may possibly be a problem with their thyroid if they've tried other things and it's just not working. So that's a, a thing to get um, checked out. And then you've got your testes and your ovaries, right? Your ovaries produce estrogen and your testes help produce, uh, they release chemicals that help produce sperm. So that's your endocrine system. Uh, this pretty much wraps up neurons and the nervous system. And uh, next time we'll be talking about part five of biopsychology or part six, we'll be talking about the brain and all the different little parts of the brain, so uh, stick around.